Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimazeski with Adam Atkinson, and we're going to jump into a brand new series, which is Are You Ready to Compete? So this could apply to new competitors, obviously, but also people who may you know, already be in the game and just considering whether they should take a break or not. But the first thing I think, Adam, that everybody should understand is, you know, how much time does this take? Will I even have the time to do this? So what do you see if you could just kind of categorize the biggest time needs for somebody getting ready to compete? Yeah, you know, it depends on their lifestyle. You know, I think most of us work, you know, somewhat of a nine to five job. Maybe not. Maybe you have some more flexibility. Um, currently, I'm working with a girl who's a nursing student who's uh, got clinicals and everything else, and she somehow is managing that time. I don't know a lot of people that could do that, but that just lets me know how important that is to her that she does utilize any free time that she does have towards her competing goals. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a great place to start because it's more conceptual. Instead of saying, you know, you have to allocate this amount of time for these tasks, I remember when I was a college student, and that's when I started competing, there, there were some semesters, some years, I would say, no, man, I am just way too busy. I cannot do that. Other times, I found that the entire process of prep was very grounding, and it gave me kind of an anchor point in my life. And it really helped other areas because I was, I was kind of riding off the discipline of, of that whole process. Yeah, a lot of times people will start packing their meals and um, have their food ready for the week, which can actually send them, you know, save them more time from going to the store and maybe trying to pick up something quick. But is it really that quick if they, you know, drove 10 or 15 minutes to go get it and then back home? Mm -hmm. You know, there was, a, there was a point in my career, I think, as an early pro, when I was conscious, because of young children, of how much time it was taking and how self-absorbing the sport can be. So I remember one time doing a little uh, experiment in my family where I wanted to see how far I could go into my prep before anybody even noticed. And uh, I, I think I successfully made it 10 or 12 weeks before my wife or one of the kids were like, wow, you're, uh, you're getting kind of lean. Are you, are you getting ready for a show? And, and as my goal was to, you know, I wanted it to not take more time out of my schedule than anything else would. And I, and I think that's a good concept to kind of put in your mind that this can be as uh, detailed and consuming as you let it become. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. So if you could categorize, I mean, I think we're going to have some extra cardio. So let's talk about the things that do actually create a, a bit of a time suck. So, you know, training, I think everybody's already probably training. You're doing that. That's part of your lifestyle. Um, I, you know, you and I both probably are, are cardio minimalists. We're going we're gonna to do just the least amount we have to. But it's still, you know, you probably do need to consider an extra time of day of training and maybe an extra certain amount of sessions per week. So what does that look like typically for you as a maximum? Yeah, so, you know, I look at it as time doing cardio, um, time posing, and time preparing food. Those are usually the biggest time constraints. And uh, it kind of depends on, you know, that person's metabolic capacity is, you know, sometimes you can tell from the beginning, is this going to be a tougher prep, especially if you've worked with a client before, if they're an endomorph, it's going to take some time, they're going to be pushing more cardio than my ectomorph is going to be pushing. So that can be a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's perfect. I mean, it's, it's great that you divide it up into those three categories, you know, time posing, you know, that's, that's something that I think everybody should do a little bit along the way. You know, don't think, oh, I'm going to wait till the end and I'll just do hours and hours per day in the last couple of weeks. It's way better to have time um, multiplied over, over those weeks. And it could be just five or 10 minutes a day. But besides the cardio and the food prep, as I mentioned, I, I think this can almost be something that creates more stability in people's lives. But we really do, guys, have to consider that, you know, sometimes it's just not the right time. If you have big events planned, you have something, you know, educationally, professionally, relationally that you know has to be a higher priority, then you can still train. You can still do all those things that move you in that direction of improvement in your own sport, but maybe not necessarily with the pressure of competing. So 
make that determination. And as we go forward in the series, we'll, we'll tackle some more very specific things. But thank you guys for watching and thank you, Adam. And we'll see you next time as we continue on in the series of, you know, is it time for you to compete? We'll catch you next time.